I am as busy as a bee. I've been working out here all morning. Sun is starting to come up pretty good. So I think I'm going to go in now because it's supposed to be, well, they're cl calling for about 100 degrees. So I got a lot done. I've been filling all my buckets up. Look at this. Look at this. This one I've got going. This is shark fin melon. Put some rocks around there to help hold the water. You know, it was, it was like 90 something degrees yesterday and they made it through fine. I got this old thing in a thrift store. So for now I'm using that. Look at that. Because it was here. That just keeps the birds off. Look what I found. Petrified round squash. If I drop the seeds in here, they'll probably grow. I couldn't reach them and didn't see them underneath. I'm going to set this all up with buckets. And in the meantime, before I put any soil, whether it would be bag soil, whether it would be soil from another tote, I am filling all these buckets at least halfway. Filling them with weeds and leaves and then see if I have some kitchen scraps. I'll put that in the middle because I want the leaves and the sticks and the stuff on the bottom. Look at my meadow. Oh, I had a skunk in here this morning. So cute. Came to get water and then ran back and I'm starting to think he lives under the truck bed. So we don't want to mess around too much under the truck bed. He won't bother me. He won't come out during the day. He'll come out at night. He's got water. He can forage around the yard. What does the skunk eat? They're actually perfectly fine in the garden if you've got them. They eat snails, which I have noticed. I have found shells around and they're sucked out. So what they'll do is they'll suck out the snail. They'll eat snails and slugs and bugs. They'll dig around. See here over here. This is probably him. See over here. See, you can see there's things like it's been moved around the soil. That could be him. What they do is they dig in the dirt and they'll grubs. They'll eat grubs. I mean, I guess they'd eat earthworms if they found them too. But you've got the fruit beetles out here and they're going to be hatching soon. Not my favorite insect in any way. Anyways, they're going to be hatching out and then... You know, they're coming to the surface and then they cause havoc on my figs and different things. But I can cover it with tool. The point is the grubs are these big white things and they eat those. They absolutely love them. So it's a win-win for me. So the skunks don't bother me. Oh, there's a cabbage moth. Good. You can do your thing on the weeds and not on my plants, which I haven't co covered a lot yet with tool, but I'm working on it. Still setting this up. I'm almost done in here. See? See all these weeds? Do I compost weed seeds? Uh, yes, I put that towards the bottom. So if they try to grow, they're gonna grow out of the holes and just chop them off and throw them back in. So yes, absolutely. All this, when I'm ready, I will definitely compost. You know, when you start to garden and find out that you can make your own soil, at least the bottom part, you know, of your containers, be it a tote or even in the ground or flower pots or buckets or whatever, making your own soil, you'll start to look at weeds a whole lot differently because you can save hundreds and depending on how much your, you know, how big your garden is and thousands of dollars. Look at this. We're coming up. I don't even know what kind of squash that is. And there's a tomato plant there too. This is all last year. I'll decide what I'm going to keep. Last year's plant making a comeback. Let's see. This is last year's plant. No, this is not last year's. It's seeds from last year's plant. Doing really, really good. So, I see my gloves are torn. So, I'm going to keep that. That's a zucchini. Probably a little bit in the shade, but that's okay. That's okay. The sun has been moving, so it's perfectly fine. This is my zucchini I planted. See, I had four seeds I had from the heirloom guy from eBay, and I planted out in February the seeds. And look at looky. I'm going to have zucchini as long as I hand pollinate them. I've been hand pollinating my zucchini now because I don't think the beads are, well, let's put it this way. The bees are working, but you have to have a lot of bees. So we've got a big garden and they've got to travel around. So I'm going to hand pollinate a lot. What's in here? Just a stick. Let's see. That's a male flower and a male flower. Three male flowers and all the way on the bottom there is a female. See the little squash there? I don't know if it opened already. It might have. If it opened already, there's not much I can do. This has got too many plants. I think what I'm going to do, they're growing so vigorous that I'm going to get through this heat wave that's supposed to end in the next few days. 
And then I might yank a couple of these out instead of composting them. There's way too many. I mean, look how beautiful. That is absolutely packed with flowers down there. And the flowers all starting to come up in leaves. So I'm gonna pick, and this one's got its own container. It's actually in the flower pot, see? So I'll leave that one, and then I might leave one more and then start yanking. What I do is I yank them out, and I put them in another container, and then I water them real good and trim off the bottom leaves, and they really do make a nice comeback. You think they're dying, and they're not. Looky, I'm so excited. I've been hand pollinating. That's what I was showing you, look. You see that? I hand pollinated that. And let me tell you a secret. You don't have to use a zucchini flower to hand pollinate it. If you're gonna eat it, not save the seeds, take any squash. It doesn't matter if any of these are hybrids and you hand pollinate it with anything. Any squash, get it pollinated. If you've got the male flowers, extra ones, and you'll have a beautiful fruit to eat. This is absolutely gorgeous. See, there's two plants in here and they're leaving. They are definitely leaving the room. So here is what I think I told you I was gonna do. I did it. This is a two system. It's not the best two system. It's a fast road together two system. I don't think I can do this holding the camera and showing you. Let me see if I can do this. Nobody's around when you need them. No, I do. Oh, wow. See, earthworms, but that's not the point. Let me put this back. I didn't have soil in there. It was all packed with leaves. And see, there's another bucket. There's holes on the bottom of this bucket. And then there's, I'm working in the mud, so don't, don't worry about it. My arms, everything's dirty. Um, and there's holes on the bottom here. So if I water this, which is garlic chives, see what I do? Then it go, I don't have to water this because this is gonna water this. And then this waters the bottom. And this is gonna make this plant just take off and grow massive because it's got a constant compost in place bucket in there. That was like a quick thing. Normally I show you to make them fitted. It doesn't have to be fitted. Whatever way you want to do it. I just grabbed some floral pots around here. One was bigger, put the smaller one on the top, bigger one on the bottom, stuffed it full of leaves and it's already gone. There's my box garden. Isn't this beautiful? This came up on its own. And look at the size because it's leaching out of here. Everything I put in here is now going straight into the ground. This really doesn't need to be here. I'll take that out. That one's doing beautiful, but it's leaching. So when you're building your own soil, then it will leach out and feed anything around it. I might throw some seeds around there later. Smaller box, smaller plant. We'll keep an eye out on that. And those two are zucchini plants that I planted. Look at that. And then here I'm working. I'm almost done. Nothing new. Still throwing things. I think I'm pretty much done with this. I have a little bit more soil from another tote. I'm going to move this tote. Might throw a few more leaves on the top, just soft leaves, say. Then it won't have to break down a lot of stems because it is absolutely full of branches and stuff already. So these three are done. I might throw some leaves and then top it because it's going to drop a lot. So I'm Probably we'll top it with some more, either potting soil. I got some potting soil, real cheap at Aldi's, $5 a bag. I could put like an inch on each one if I want, or I can see if I've got more soil from another tote. And my sticks, I collect sticks. Almost done with this. Look how far up I go. This is icky kitchen scraps. I shouldn't say icky. It stinks, it's been out in the rain. Look at this. I don't even know what all this is. It doesn't matter. Even if it's left out in the rain and you didn't put it anywhere. Look at that papaya. Oh, you know what that means. If there's seeds in there. And then eggshells. I don't even have to break it. And then I've got the same thing here. Now right now leaving it just like this. Let me move this. Sorry. Yes, it's going to bring ants and flies. I don't care right now. It's out of the way. It's not bothering anything. Let the insects do what they want until I'm ready to cover it. I will probably cover it today. I'm gonna throw some more leaves on top. I've picked a lot of weeds already. Oh, look, look, look. I hope you saw that. Can they, what do they call it? Canada goose, the pair of them. That was cool, I haven't seen them in so long. Okay, let's reverse back, back to this. I just haven't seen them. Of course, I didn't have my big camera, just my phone, but you got to see it with me. I didn't even know what it was. I thought they were ravens. 
That was so cool. Now I'm going to have to keep an eye out. Anyways, going back to this, I am probably going to top it with the rest of the potting soil leaves, a few more leaves on the top and then cover it by today. This is just a cutting off of a purple tree collar and I'm still debating. Do I want to save it? It's kind of got a... Look, look, look. They're making a circle around here. I wonder if they're looking at our ponds. I can see they went back there. Oh, I hope you heard that. Sorry for spinning it around. That is so cool. I'm really excited. I don't think I've got them a really good shot. I try to collect clips and I don't think I have Canadian geese. I've got them way up in the sky. But like I said, I don't know if, what it's going to look like on my phone. Boy, they were honky. Maybe they were coming by and saying good morning. Cool. All right. Now I completely forgot what I was saying. Anyways, I'm going to decide what I want to do. No loss if I want to stick it in there. Now you go, wait a minute. If you stick it in there... It was going to cause multiple problems. If it lives, the deer love it. It will bring the deer here. They'll go, oh, look, she's got something. I smell it. And they'll come running over here to eat it. The other thing, too, is it may cause no problems at all, or it could just rot away. Now, being that I threw all these kitchen scraps in there, and you go, that's just going to turn into a kitchen scrap? No. There's a, a message that some of these cuttings do. I'm going to call it a message. Let's get really in layman's term. I don't even know what the real term is called. They're giving a signal off to nature not to, to decompose them, not to do anything with them. Okay, so if I cover all this, if that starts to set root right away, you know, just starts to take off, they won't touch it. Nothing will eat it. That's why you can grow things without having it decompose. If it returns to the soil and it dies back, then by nature, the microbes and the earthworms will eat it. So I have done a lot of cuttings this way and it works. So just keep that in mind. All right, well, I think that's pretty good. Haven't touched this yet, but I'm really happy I've got that almost done. Get that emptied and out of the sun or I'll lose that tote. That's a super old tote that's been not having too much in there. Mm, yeah, not a good thing. I'll move that and then I can call this done. Then it's just a matter of maybe throwing some leaves or chopped up weeds or something as a mulch on top around the plants. That will hold in moisture as well. The box is going to draw. You can see some of the boxes are already starting to fall apart. And I'm just hoping they make it long enough to grow. That's all I care. Get some zucchini out of it. It will decompose all through here. And hopefully I don't have to deal with it till next spring. And then I can either shovel it all up and put it in a tote or shovel it all up and put it in a box again. We'll see. So that's the update. Like I said, the sun is out. The geese are gone now. And well, I'm going to go in the house, get some coffee. I came out really early because Gary had some errands. And I thought, well, I'll come out here and work while he's gone. So I did a lot before the sun, but I can feel the sun is really beating on me now. It's really hot. So I'm going to go get in, get my stuff done. I just kind of wanted to do an update and show you the box garden is doing pretty good. And I'll get those planted. Well, I'm not going to, I've got the plants. I've started seedlings. I've got different squash. I've picked up a couple from a nursery. Going to start them later. I'm not going to do it during the heat wave because I thought when I came out here the other day and it got hot, they were all laying on their side and I thought, oh, we're going to lose this. We did not. Some went down, everybody popped back up. I was worried because plants that are quite big have a bigger root system. So when it gets super hot, you keep the soil underneath damp. So water it in the morning. Don't water their leaves while it's hot or what you've done is you've cooked it. Never water your plant on a hot day. If you remember that, there's a good chance your plants will make it through the heat waves. Make sure the soil is damp, but not your leaves. Because if you water the leaves, it's just like you put them in a pot of boiling water and you cook them. Once they get wet and the sun gets on them, you've cooked them. If you leave them alone and they're dry, so don't turn the sprinklers on or anything. You're not doing them a favor. Just water the soil. If you want to, lay your hose down gently and water around the bottom. When they have a bigger root system, they can pull the water into the root system and then come as soon as the sun goes down, come evening, they can all pop back up. I was worried on the little ones. I didn't know if they had enough of a root system to do that. 
apparently they did. So they made it through. So keep that, you know, little idea. If you're got a heat wave going, go, oh, I better run outside and hose everything down. You've just cooked your plants. They have no way of recovering. Once those leaves get wet and the sun beats on them at 100 degrees, you've cooked them. Just remember that. So only gently go through, through with the hose. So don't have your sprayer on. Just lay the hose in there and water around the base of the plant. The best thing to do is, as you can see, the soil's already wet. I've done a morning watering. And sometimes I do a late night watering. And then once you do that, you just leave them alone and keep your fingers crossed. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. This was just like a morning vlog on nothing. Just enjoying nature. And I sure hope you got to see the geese. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, I feel a butterfly there. I love my little meadow. Comes home with a treasure. Look at that. Bees always find me treasures. And where'd you find that? Uh, in, in the pits, trash tie. Oh, that's right. You find me any ladders? No, no ladders.